Good evening, America. This is the Dr. Bob Show on the American Radio Network, reminding you that we are not just the people from any city or state in the Union. We're not just the folks from the east or west coasts of America. We're not only Americans, Occidentals, or Orientals. We are people from the planet Earth. We are Earth people. Is there a scientific basis to healing with prayer and crystals? Our final guest tonight believes he can prove it. Dr. Marcel Vogel is recognized as one of the most authoritative researchers into the therapeutic use of quartz crystals. For 27 years, he was a senior research scientist and one of the most prolific inventors at IBM, introducing liquid crystal technology as well as developing radiant pigment, fluorescent phosphors, and magnetic tape coatings. He has produced many patents which are now in common use. In 1984, he retired from IBM to form his own laboratory, Psychic Research, Inc., which is dedicated to serving humanity through the study of the subtle energies and forces that radiate from the body of a living form. This is 21st Century Radio's Dr. Bob Show on the American Radio Network. Our number is 1-800-TALK-321, and we'll return to our guest, former IBM research scientist, Dr. Marcel Vogel. Marcel Vogel, who was for 27 years a senior research scientist for IBM and holder of many patents. He is founder and director of Psychic Research, Inc. at 1725 Little Orchard Street, Unit C, San Jose, California at 95215. And his phone number there is 408-279-2291. And we will, of course, repeat that information later. Good evening, Marcel. Good evening to you and hi. Hello. How are you? Can we begin with something simple? Bob, Bob did say hello. I did say hello there, Dr. Vogel. Good. Happy to talk to you. How did you get involved in research with crystals? <laughs> it's a rather str I've been into crystals all of my life, first of all. I've grown crystals in the furnace, in the laboratory. But the handling of quartz for their therapy and the unusual properties, which we're going to be talking on now, started in 1973 in, I gave a talk at the Church of Religious Science, and a minister there heard me talk, and she called me the next day, and she said, I feel impelled. I want to send you a crystal, a quartz crystal. I am a stockholder in this quartz crystal mine in Ontario, Canada. And this crystal is unusual because when you hold it in your hand, I find that it will vibrate or oscillate in your hand. And I had about a zero interest in doing anything along this line. And she was very insistent that she send it to me. And I said, if you want, send it to me. So in the mail came the crystal and uh, next to me at the time I received it was a young man by the name of Chuck McNosa, who I had hired as my assistant, a very sensitive young man. And I took the crystal in my hand and I drew my breath in. <clears throat> and as I released my breath, sure enough, I felt this vibration or pulsation in the crystal. I said, uh-huh, that's interesting. Now, what is this vibration? And I took then the crystal and pointed it at the face of Chuck McNosa and just pulsed my breath. When I did that, his head went back and he went into an altered state of consciousness. Uh, in fact, we went to the Pyramid of Cheops. We went to different parts of the country. We did traveling together. And this was done. I put the crystal aside and forgot about it. I had so many other things going in the laboratory at that time. I just developed the <clears throat> um, new types of phosphors, rare earth phosphors, yttrium vanadate europium and europium tungstate. And so my mind was occupied with a million other things. And this is back, you said, in 1970-what? 74. 1974. 73 and 74. Okay. So it's not too many years ago. Well, Dr. Uh, Vogel. What? I was going to ask you, what are crystals? Pardon me? What are crystals, Dr. Vogel? Crystals are a single, are multiple unit 
cells of a particular species, like, for example, quartz now is silicon dioxide, SiO2. It assembles in space as what we call a unit cell. And this unit cell accretes together to form a single crystal. So each one of these unit cells orderly and regularly associate together and form then a single crystal. That is called then a single crystal. You will have polycrystals, which there will be jumbled masses of little tiny dendritic forms of crystals. These are called polycrystals. In your psychic research newsletter, you talk about the fact that we actually have crystals in our body. Will you explain yes. this? Yes. Now, when I speak of that, I'm speaking of the structures that are in the cellular membranes, our lyotropic mesophases. These are liquid crystal membranes. And these membranes are controlled by the very weak electrical fields and also very sensitive to patterns of thought. And, and they will change in electrical conductivity. They will change in surface resistivity. And this is the outer membrane of the, each individual cell in our body. Mm -hmm. I have studied this extensively in my own laboratory. I have a rather large microscope, about a quarter million dollar optical microscope. Is this liquid crystal membrane something that's acknowledged by current scientific oh, community? Oh, yes. It's published. I've got hundreds of papers on this. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Then what do you mean when you say that the Earth is a crystal? Well, the Earth also acts as a single membrane in the sense that it is vibrating, creating a field in space. And that field coheres in space, and that coherent field takes on the characteristics of a crystallographic formation. Yeah. See, once energy starts to cohere together, it takes on the property of matter. The transition from energy into matter. What I have ended up in, in the intensive studies that I have done now, is I feel that we are making quantum transducers for the mind. I'm making... Hello. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that when you hold a crystal in your hand, you're storing information not electrical or magnetic fields, but information. And that information then can be locked into a crystal and it can be then processed by another person or it can be processed by spinning that crystal, water around the crystal or wine. Now I've proven this point many thousands of times by putting a program in with my mind of finishing a wine, or a young wine. I do that, and then we take the wine and pass it once around the crystal, and the wine comes out a finished wine, as if it had been cellared for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And we've done about 100,000 gallons of that now. About nine, ten different uh, categories of wine. And once I take the program out with my mind, nothing happens to the wine. It just becomes the same wine as you put in. So the primary controller is the mentation, the program that you imprint with your mind. So this is the first step to building mind computers. Uh -huh. So you see how big this is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what can we use crystals for, Dr. Vogel? Well, I'm giving you one for opening up a whole new areas and fields of chemistry and uh, in the purification of water. What I have done now in therapeutics is to relieve, to re 
blockages in the human body, imprinting of patterns where people have suffered stress, shock. Uh, if you'd have the copy of the last issue from the experiences in Australia, I'll give you an example. A man came to me who had been bitten by a poisonous insect. He was still in shock. The doctors wanted to amputate his leg. He was that toxic. As he refused to have his leg amputated. He came to me, and I treated him once with the crystal to release the toxin from his body, from the insect bite. The whole auditorium, there was about four, 300 people in the auditorium, filled with the odor of formic acid. His body shook, and suddenly his whole skin, texture, and everything cleared up. The doctors took his blood pressure before and after the blood pressure dropped radically. We need a break right here, Dr. Vogel. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Would you like to finish up with what you were talking yes, about, I the would. snake bite? Yeah, the next morning, like that night rather, he voided in his stool, black stool, and the same um, formic acid odor took place. The doctors took his blood pressure the following day. It had dropped even further. His total body stabilized, all pain left his limbs, and he was perfectly normal. All from the use of a crystal? One treatment with a crystal. Unbelievable. That was witnessed by over 200 people. Well, a lot of people, as you know, currently are infatuated, might be a good word, with quartz crystals. How do you charge a crystal? There's so much misinformation well, out there. I'm sorry about that, and it's very, very simple. It's the intention of the operator. It is completely stupid, I'm sorry, it is wrong to try to put it in water or seawater or any of these type of things. I've demonstrated this again and again. To charge a crystal, you hold it in your hand, you take a deep breath, put your thoughts in and release your breath and it's charged. That's all there's to it. And that's it? That's all. Now what about cleaning a crystal? Cleaning a crystal, you hold it in your hand and you visualize emptying the charge and releasing all of the unwanted programs, pulsing your breath and it's clean. And that's it. And I, I have scientific equipment that I've measured these things, Omega-5 and spectrophotometers, and I can verify all of these operations by secondary backup work that I've done in pH, spectrophotometry, and all of the secondary scientific measurement. Well, I think that the information you've just given us is so important because there are so many books out there that tell you use salt water and put no, it in no. the sun and... Heat it up and right. pull it down. Let's, can we move on to the Bavarian experiment with prayer? It is yes, so it, significant. That is so wonderful because what we had there were 34 people uh, up in the Alps, Bavarian Alps, and the majority of them had their own crystal, and they had a Roman Catholic priest with us, and he was just a delightful person. He had a guitar, and we sat at nighttime, and we played the guitar together. And with us was a physicist, a medical doctor, and I had my Omega-5 to measure the forces that were in the crystal and in the water. So we put a jug of water on the altar, and we measured the field that was present in each person's crystal. Now, we had the crystals that were cut by us, and we had about a half a dozen crystals that were natural crystals that people got, like Herkimer diamonds and other naturally terminated crystals. Do you follow? Yes. Not so, sure. we measured these and we recorded these results on day one, after the mass, day two, day three, and day four. We measured both the crystal and the water that was on the altar. On day one, it was about 10 to the third power. In other words, numbers with three digits. The same thing true with the water. <clears throat> the second day was about 10 to the fifth digits, five digits. 
Dr. Vogel, I'll have to pause in just a few seconds. We'll be back after a three. Dr. Marcel Vogel, would you please? Are you ready? On? Yes, we're ready now. All righty. We did the measurements with three people, a physicist, a medical doctor, and myself, and we all got exactly the same readings. On the, after the second day, we got no further readings from either the Herkimer diamonds or the natural crystals. They did not charge. The thir fourth, third, and fourth day, they crept up, and finally when we got to the fourth day, it went up to 10 to the 34th power. Oh, oh my. Four times 10 to the 34th power, five, four. I took a sample of that water with me home, and one year later, measured that water, and it was exactly the same reading that we had when we did it a year ago in Germany. One year later. One year later. Hmm. Now, we did a spectrophotometric analysis of that in the ultraviolet. The curve went off of the graph. We had the highest response from any sample of water as far as the uh, ultraviolet spectrophotometry. The energy in that region was the highest that we've recorded from any uh, known source. Can you explain that a little bit more for those? Yes, I, I can now. We have, we're really having to devote our life to this because this is absolutely virgin areas of research. We are dealing with storage phenomena of forces which are not in the electromagnetic area of the spectrum. Call it whatever you want, tachyons or whatever you want to give them a name. But when these forces come to a certain level, they become critical and they start to jump to a very, very high level between the third and the fourth day went from 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 34th. I encounter exactly the same thing in my studies on wine. I take wine and I pass the, the new wine that I'm studying one time around, two times around the coil, around the crystal, testing three, four. When I get to the fourth pass, I come to a peak. The next time around, the wine is degenerated, it's gone. So I take that reading, that value, put that information into the crystal, and now that information will structure that wine again and again on infinitum. Mm -hmm. Now, I took drops of this water, put it in <laughs> uh, triple distilled water, and... I got a reduced reading, but I still got a tremendously amplified reading by just one drop in 100 cc's. Dr. Vogel, I'm sorry to break in one more time. I was, I was wondering, do you think that um, rocks really have the power to heal? Hello? Hello? Go ahead. A little bit loud. Your okay. voice is very faint. Do you actually think that rocks have the power to heal? Could what? To heal? She wants to know if rocks have the power to heal, Dr. Vogel. No, they do not. Nothing has, no rock has the power to heal. You heal with your mind and your love. What really heals is the love that's in your heart. Mm -hmm. See, I... what I do when I charge a crystal, I put the thought of love and well-being. I say a prayer. Dear Lord, let me be of service to this person. Not my will, but thine. And... When I do that, I, res I separate my own will, so the crystal itself is only an instrument. It has no power of itself to heal. And that's where so many people get a misnomer and build a lot of psych uh, unusual fears about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree with you. 
Okay. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And you have won a copy of Psychic Research Newsletter and a crystal. And friends, in the future, we are going to give out more crystals and psychic research newsletters over the next couple of months on the Dr. Bob Show. Good. Okay, Dr. Vogel, we have a break that's coming up in about a minute and a half, after which we will have 11 whole minutes for you we, for us to talk uninterruptedly, and that's that's a great boon here. Oh, uh, that's going to be perfect. Radio. Yeah, so. so why don't we spend a little bit of this last minute then talking a little bit more about the power of love and what you started to tell our call. Yeah, what I, what, it, it's really fulfilling what Christ gave us 2,000 years ago. He said, if you wish to love me, love your fellow man. And the whole principle of healing that Christ did was loving. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we've called them miracles, but he said, all of these things I have done, you can do in like manner. Mm-hmm. And I've tried them out, and I find, yes, I can help people who are deaf to hear and blind to see. I've got video records of all of these things accomplished. I've got about 300 videotapes that I've made. And we have about five seconds for us to announce. This is the Dr. Bob Show, and the American Radio Network's back in just a minute. Sel Vogel. Dr. Vogel is combining his lifetime study of energy conversion and crystalline coating systems, magnetism, phosphor technology, and optical microscopy with a study of the energies of mind and spirit. It is his intent to quantify and identify these energies and to apply them to Psychic Research Incorporated's current projects of purifying water, aging wine, for which Dr. Vogel has a patent and what we've talked about this evening, and the therapeutic application of crystals and crystal devices. Along those lines, Dr. Vogel, yes. you mentioned in your recent newsletter, Psychic Research Newsletter, mm-hmm. um, some work with the smoky quartz crystals and getting rid of residual radiation. Yes. Would um, you talk about this? Yes, I'd like to. We, we did the following. We took <coughs> the smoky quartz and exposed it to x-ray. <coughs> and uh, we then took and spun the... Uh, water around the crystal that we had exposed to x-ray and put the water onto photographic Polaroid film against a control. Now the Polaroid film developed and formed a perfect imprint or image of the uh, base of the water from the radiation that came from the crystal. Now we found a means of stripping this radiation by exposing it then to red light. And when we did that, there was no radiation left in the crystal and it was gone. So what this gave me as a indicator that a person who had been exposed to radiation such as x-rays, who have been, you know, having x-rays of the teeth or chest x-rays, they could wear a smoky quartz and then take the smoky quartz and give it exposure to red light. It would clear it and then put it back on their body and wear it again. Now, this is preliminary, and I, I have a validation from the photographic evidence that there was radiation transferred to the water. Mm-hmm. Now, we got a sensitive Geiger counter, and I was able to measure the uh, a radiation charge with the Geiger counter on the smoky quartz. And when I cleared it, it was gone. Now, this is an active research yet, but it does, it does store. And the principle is the following. Smoky quartz is a product of radiation. In other words, nature creates a defect in the lattice spacing of the silica in the silicon dioxide, it is thrown out of kilter forming a F center or a farben center. And that gives you the color of the smoky quartz. So it is produced by radiation, so it is logical that radiation will absorb in that region as well, and it does, and I find that to be true. Mm-hmm. Well, There's a lot, lot more work yet to be done, but it's the first step towards a real practical dosimeter for a person to wear and take the radiation out of the body. Particularly for people undergoing chemotherapy and radiation treatment. Mm -hmm. All of this type of thing, yes. That would be amazing. And I'm publicly sharing it like I am with you because I don't want to patent it. I want to make it public knowledge and have it available for everyone to use. 
Mm-hmm. That is my intention. Well, while we're on the subject of radiation, what does underground nuclear testing do to the Earth? Makes a mess of it. Can you talk about that? Because you did talk about the Earth being a crystal, and now we know that crystals hold things. And Well, we, we're throwing everything out of kilter. I, I feel very unhappy over it. I wish there are much better ways of creating energy, and we should take time to look on alternate forms of creating energy instead of nuclear power. Do you think that the nuclear testing has a lot to do with recent earthquakes around the planet? I can't answer that, dear. I'm not qualified from a scientific standpoint to give this type of opinion. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss to do that for you. Mm -hmm. I, I can speak within my own scientific uh, expertise. When I go beyond that, I'd be, I'd be foolhardy. Well, you know what's nice, Marcel? What? We can always count on you for professional judgment. But by the way, I have finished a book now. It's taken me 14 years. And it'll be myself on crystals. It will be out this year by George, by Ballantyne. Oh, great. It'll be about 1,000 pages. <laughs> 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 but it'll be about a 150 case histories. So it will be the first book with actual case histories with all different public, you know, professionals mm -hmm. uh, detailing how they've used the crystal, what they have found, and what they have not found. Mm -hmm. And above all, the follow-up, what, what has worked and what I've gone into carefully, what areas it has not worked in. Just as important, obviously. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. See, one of the key things I've found is when you treat with a crystal, you're removing a block. It's like pulling a plug on a dam. Mm -hmm. Well... After you do that, then the body has got to rebuild itself, and you've got to go into regular therapy and to help a person to rebuild. Right. And you just don't expect, you're not, you're not performing miracles in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I think the point you made earlier is so important for people who work with crystals or who work in the healing profession to realize that they're not doing it. And, you know, that, that they're instruments for this divine cosmic energy called love. At least that's, that's how we experience it. That's what I call it. Yeah. That's right. Well, let me ask you a question along these lines. Uh, you know, I have an interest in 21st century medicine along naturopathic lines Beautiful. and direct oh. to center. What do you see as the medicine of 21st century? A complete new set of flower essences. What do you mean by that? I'm going to be making them in a cup in another, this month. I'm going to start in from Australia. Can you explain this a little bit more? Oh, yes. We'll be making them with structured water. You'll be having brand new forms of flowered essences with structured water, and then we're going to go right into homeopathic materials. That was something I was going to ask you, because in your work, the, the circulation of water, the movement of the water, seems to be the key to holding the template of information. That is correct. Uh -huh. And when you spin, you create a vortex. Mm -hmm. And that vortex, vortexing the fluid is informational transfer. Mm -hmm. well, we're, Victor, not, yeah. we're not talking electromagnetic, we're talking informational transferring. Now, that spinning of a fluid, even if it's in a, a stainless steel coil, if you take a, a magnetometer, a very sensitive uh, magnetometer like I've had, I can measure a magnetic moment in the coil up to by 0 0.07 Gauss. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, the net from that spinning fluid is a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> the initial vortex is, is not in the electromagnetic field. It's information. See, it's informational transfer. Well, the, one of the questions I had, and I, we've asked this before, you know, most people think, well, you can just pick up a crystal that comes from some mine somewhere, oh, Brazil yeah. or whatever, and uh, it starts to work kind of like automatically. Oh, tell, us no. what, tell us what you do with crystals to make them work efficiently. <laughs> I get a raw crystal, and I've got about $100,000 worth of equipment bought, and a man that's taken five years of training to cut this crystal and finish it to the point where it is tuned like a laser. It is really a mined laser. So you cut away all of the dross until you have that thing down to the point where it becomes sensitive to your patterns of thought. Now, the discovery we made is the following. When I achieve this end, to my great 
joy and surprise, I get a number, 454, on the major reading I get on the crystal. When I measure water, I get exactly the same value for pure water, Hmm. which is not contaminated. So the crystal and the water are tuned exactly to each other. Hmm. Now, when I take a raw crystal, put it in the same equipment I have and measure it, it gets down to a number like 75, 100, 125. It's nothing compared to the 454. Mm -hmm. So it's getting that precise numerical value repeatable. Every crystal we make has the same number and performs exactly the same way. Well, I've seen your crystals, and they're exquisite. Yes. I've never seen anything else like them. And You're going to see the 14 sides now, the 13 sided ones that we're making. I'd like to. I've seen the 8, I believe it is. The 8 now, then we went up to 13 and 14. Mm. Well, we're coming. I'd like to say to all of you who are listening at this time, go to a rock shop and pick up a handful of small, inexpensive crystals of all different varieties, shape, and form. Purchase them and get a book on geology, and it will fascinate you from beginning to end to realize a wonderful course of nature as she grows these crystals down to the ages. Gemstones have been grown by nature, but we have this wonderful world of crystals, the amethyst, the jade, the quartz, and each of them have their own unique properties. And as you learn to study them and test them, you'll be able to discover these properties and enjoy them. It costs you only a few pennies to get these natural crystals, and they will teach you so much by just learning about them and feeling them and letting them teach you. I've done that with fluorescent minerals, the fluorescent rocks. I've done that with all the rocks I have here in and around me. The cutting I've made of crystals are for specific purposes, for scientific purposes. But I love a simple little crystal as much as a child. I've enjoyed being with all of you. I thank God for the gifts he has given me and I've enjoyed the moments we have had together. Well, thank thank you. you. You're very welcome, Dr. Vogel. And we're looking forward to your 1,000-page book by Ballantine Publishers. Is it this spring? Uh, you know, it's going to be later on. I'm not sure it's going to be 1,000 pages. I could probably cut it down. But, oh, I guess so. Uh, but it's going to be out this year. It was, it was going to be out last year, but they put it ahead to this year now. But it's coming out this year now. We look well, forward to that. It's going to be fun. We look forward to having you again on our show, and thank you again for sending us all those crystals, which we will disseminate to the American audience over the next Uh, couple of weeks. Tell them I enjoy them, and each of them has my love in it. Thank you very much, Dr. Vogel. Goodbye now, and God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Well, friends, you have heard the very best there is in the area of crystals tonight. In this hour, it was Dr. He was Dr. Marcel Vogel. I was going to say, who was that masked man? Well, the masked man was Dr. Marcel Vogel. 